Hello everyone, my name is John Perry, and today my young adult topic is about the Chosen One. General information. The Chosen One trope is pretty self-explanatory, but to summarize, a character is declared by some authority or prophecy to be the one meant to carry out a special task. This usually comes in the form of defeating a formidable foe, but can also range to other tasks as well, such as escort missions or perhaps stealing an artifact. Regardless, this specific individual is the designated hero, and only he or she can rise to the occasion. At least that's how it's supposed to go. But as with all action storytelling, changes and variations will undoubtedly take place. Chosen One Origins The Chosen One is a very persistent trope that has existed since ancient times. It was especially prevalent from Greek and Roman mythology or religious contexts in the form of a hero who is gifted divine strength either through God and God's heritage or be because these divine beings willed it. While pretty similar to its modern day usage, the main difference is being the chosen one in Greek mythology is equal or greater parts curse and blessing. Despite all their gifts and powers, an ancient hero is more often than not a glorified pawn and plaything of the gods and goddesses. Mythological Chosen Ones Heracles or Hercules Heracles, the Greek name, or as most of you most likely know him as Hercules, Roman name, is one of the most well-known legendary mythological heroes, gifted with inhuman strength and capable of performing 10 out of the 12 infamous labors, the majority of which had him slaying nearly immortal monsters such as the impenetrable Nemean lion, the regenerative Lernian hydra, and eventually the triple-headed Cerberus, among others. Even with these awe-inspiring feats, Heracles is actually meant to be a tragic hero who represents the struggle of the human condition. He was born a demigod from an affair between Zeus and a mortal woman, causing the jealous Hera to constantly give him grief from the day he was born. She eventually inflicted him with a fit of madness, forcing Heracles to kill his wife and three sons in blind rage, plus leading to his predicament. This was the worst day of Heracles' life, but the Hera, it was Tuesday. Just another mortal to toy with and demean as all gods and goddesses tend to do. Why a novel chosen once, Percy Jackson. In stark contrast, Rick Riordan's novel series Percy Jackson and the Olympians is a modern take of Greek mythology with a much more hopeful and inspiring outlook. While the titular protagonist Percy Jackson certainly faces his own daunting hardships, He's still quite victorious and blessed more often than not, experiences far less tragedy than his canon counterparts. While he originally feels stressed out and outright hopeless in his first journey from losing his mother and the pressures of being the chosen one, he regains her and his life greatly improves as he, as he forges solid new friends and families as he goes on many adventures as the son of Poseidon. It's certainly more complex as the series unravels, but upon first glance, the divide between the classics usage and the modern usage of a chosen one is quite clear. Picture of Percy Jackson. Why a novel chosen ones? Lynn Cinder Part 1. Mercer and Meyer's Lunar Chronicles subverts the idea of a chosen one, but it follows the general formula. The protagonist Lynn Cinder starts off as a poor girl who faces prejudice and outright inhumane treatment simply for being a cyborg, and later finds out she has lunar heritage, aka moon people with mind control powers, and by the end of the first novel, she finds out she's the niece of the villainous lunar queen Lavana. Furthermore, many people such as Dr. Dimitri Erland, Michelle Benoit, Dr. Logan Tanner, and Cinder's eventual stepfather Lynn Garen work together to save her life when she almost died by arson as a toddler. However, there's one main thing that separates Lynn Cinder as a chosen one. Lynn Cinder's victories are somewhat due to luck, but more importantly, it's her own wits and willpower. Despite certainly being gifted with her mental manipulation, Cinder's heritage actually works against her rather than for it. She's constantly hounded by both the Earth and Lunar governments, forcing her to fiercely fight back with any and every scrap of an advantage she can. Furthermore, the one reason the rebellion even exists is because she chose to do so. Had she simply allowed herself to be executed at the end of the novel, which she originally planned, there wouldn't have been a victory. In the end, the only one that chose Lynn Cinder, ironically, was herself. Picture of Lynn Cinder. Note, this is fan art from a portfolio, but the author from Mercer Meyer has actually personally saved it to her Pinterest board, which, and that was because she didn't even have any like official art before, so that's why I used it. Manga Chosen One, Ichigo Kudosaki. 
Despite having a more realistic and human personality and compared to the other exaggerated mainstream shonen jump protagonists such as Son Goku, Naruto Uzumaki, or even Monkey D. Luffy, Ichigo Kurosaki from Taite Kube's hit manga Bleach has to be one of the most blatant, use in, blatant uses of the chosen one trope in literary history. Not manga or anime, I'm talking like all kinds of books. First and foremost, he won the genetic lottery since he is a hybrid of the three most powerful races in the Bleach universe as a combination of Shinigami, Quincy, and Hollow. Furthermore, his father Ishin Kurosaki was one of the most powerful Shinigami to date, and his mentor Kisuke Udahara has, been, has stated he's been searching for someone special for the longest, and that special someone happens to be Ichigo. Most egregious of all, the two main villains Sosuke Ice and Hie Watch deliberately shaped history just to create this abomination known as Ichigo. Everything is part of Aizen's plan. In your battle with Grimjow, you mastered holification. In your battle with Ukora, you seem to have gained an even greater power, Ichigo Kurosaki. All of your battles took place in the palm of my hand. I've known you from the moment you were born. <laughs> oh my god. You'd wa everything is part of you'd watch his plan too. Because I didn't have to. Your will is connected to my will. I'm saying you have always been fighting for me. Without even having to think, reflected in my eyes is the sight of you fighting for me. No matter what you think, every single thing you do is done for my gain. All because we have the same blood flowing inside of us. These two people are ancient, ancient, ancient beings. And from the beginning of like, I don't even know when. They planned everything out just to create this one guy, even though he, even though he's like their antagonist. But I don't know why, but and then these are my citations. I hope you enjoyed my presentation. It was very brief, I'll admit, since I didn't use any quotes, so I apologize for that. I hope you all have a good day.